Right, hello everyone, um, and we're back to meeting the fleet. But before we get into that, uh, I'd just like to quickly apologise for my uh, absence recently. Um, just haven't had an awful lot of time, you know, it's been a busy period. But we're back now, it's only been a couple of months I suppose, so it could have been worse. Uh, and we're returning with the first Helgen loco. Uh, so we're on the 15th loco of meeting the fleet now, I think. Um, I don't think I've done a video on every single one of them, but we did all the OFSTs together and all that sort of thing. So, anyway, this is my 15th loco. Uh, that's what we're doing today. Um, so we'll find out what it is. First of all, it's probably not a bad place to start. I'll hang on the other side. Here we go. I think that's focused. So it's Helgen, as we said. Class 128, parcels unit. Uh, number 89221. Uh, I think that's the product code, that one actually. And then the number of the loco is W55992 in BR Blue. Um, the W obviously denotes the western region where this loco was based. Um, and it's also weathered as well, which doesn't mention there. Um, you can see it's 21 pin DCC ready. It's now been DCC fitted, of course. So we'll be running it on the outer loop on the DCC lines. Right. So, the reason I bought this particular loco back in November 2016 was because of its weathering, because it's weathered in a certain fashion. Uh, so, you saw me take off the sleeve there in the packaging. Take that out, just like that. And then uh, we've got a sort of block of ice type thing that looks like it's got some snow stuck in it here and there. So, I shall just quickly. Take that off, the outer sleeve first, of course. It's very similar to Batman's packaging, except this is even more extreme. So then got a piece of loose polystyrene. Then we take this, and then you've also got these side bits, which just come out of here. Uh, take that off, take the loco out, and then remove all that. There we go. Oof, not there in the end. Right, I'm hoping the lighting's all right for you there, it looks okay. Um, so, the class 128, first of all, a bit of history on the prototype. Uh, they were introduced in 1959 and 1960, with 10 being built by the Gloucester Railway Carriage and Wagon Company of Gloucester. Um, they were built with 230 horsepower British Union traction and Albion engines. Um, and unfortunately, all were withdrawn by 1991, although the first was taken out of service in 1971 um, and most unfortunately none were preserved. I was very upset when I found that out because I love this little loco. As you can probably see they were built purely for parcels traffic, they had no passenger accommodation at all and they were based uh, half and half pretty much on the western and London Midland regions of British Railways. So um, this is obviously the Western version, although I think they were all transferred to London Midland at the end. I could be wrong with that, but I know most of it, they were all transferred to London Midland at the end, but some might have been withdrawn by them. So, it's BR Blue, as you should be able to see. So uh, I'll bring you in a bit closer. You can see straight away that it's pretty well detailed. You can see the various parcels doors along the edge. I think you can just about make out the weathering as well, which is mostly at the bottom. On the door there. I think you can just about make that out. And the BR logo, running number, etc. All the usual. But then let me show you why I went for this particular loco. You've also, I don't know if you can make that out there, but you've got some grime just behind the exhausts as well. And there we go. So it's weathered as Scooby-Doo, where are you? By an adoring fan um, who happened to be in possession of a can of spray paint. So that's why I went for this particular loco. It's fun and also I'm a fan of Scooby-Doo myself. Who, who's not? Let's be honest. On the end as well, which is probably the most exciting part of this particular loco. We've got separate window wipers, windscreen wipers. We've got the little electric sign. Don't think that's going to focus, it's worth a try. Um, you've got separate handrails just here underneath the windows uh, and to the side. 
don't know if you can make them out very well, but they are separate, they are wire metal handrails. Um, you've got the lights here, which do light up both white and red, depending on the direction of travel. Um, and then you've got, of course, sprung buffers on both ends. At the bottom as well, if I just lift her up, you can see where the weathering's been rubbed off a bit in the past two years. You can see all the detail there on the buffer beam, which is pre-fitted, I've not fitted any of that. So, you know what Helgen like, they are very keen on the old buffer beam detail. Even on locos that are supposed to pull stuff. So you have to take all the detail off when you get it. Which is feels like you're vandalising something to be honest. You can see just there on the bogey as well. Oh, maybe you can't. But take it from me. On the bogey just there at the end. At both ends. The other end is exactly the same. Um, there's a NEM coupling. In case you do want to take some of the, uh, uh, the buffer beam detail off. And put a coupling in there instead. So like, you might want to couple it onto the end of a EMU or a DMU. Um, or you might even want to put two 128s together, you never know. So I personally think this is a fabulous little loco, both as a prototype and a model. Um, and it certainly set a good precedent for me for Helgen. So I'm certainly going to be getting more Helgen locos in the future, because this one is a real star. If I just tilt her a bit, show you the bottom. See all the underframe detail there. She's all nicely weathered and coloured where appropriate as well. You can just see on the other side. Turn it around so you can see a bit better. There we go. See some coloured detail just under there. All nicely weathered as well. You can see the weathering a bit better when I tilt it as well. So it's really quite nice actually this loco. But the most noticeable thing is that it does weigh an absolute ton. She's excellent for traction, um, but maybe not. Maybe not for if you've not got many muscles like me. Um, you'll soon have some. That's all I'm gonna say. But uh, it is very good for traction. Although I'm not sure why this loco would need it unless you're gonna couple it to like some coaches or whatever. But your choice, I wouldn't personally, I'd just keep it as a single car DMU, or DPU, as, a, as I should say, diesel parcels unit. Um, I never take it off the track, this one, because I'm worried that the weathering node might get rubbed off, like it has done on the buffers, or I might drop it, to be honest, or pick it up in the wrong place, or something like that. Um, so it tends to stay on the track, unless I need to take it off for a specific reason, such as for this video uh, as an example or when I'm redoing the track. So it'll usually just stay in the good shard over there or in platform 3 just over there in the bay platform. So you can see why I'd be worried though because you can feel it's a plastic body but under frame is metal so the best place to pick it up is just here in the middle underneath that middle door some solid metal foot plate which offers a perfect place to pick it up. It's pretty much the only good place to pick it up actually because otherwise something's probably going to come off. Uh, especially that under frame, you don't want to go near that. <laughs> it's uh, pretty delicate even if it is detailed. So yeah, I'd stay away from that if I were you. So like I say, this is the, well as you can see, this is the BR Blue version. There's also BR Green versions and Royal Mail versions available. Um, although I don't think mo I think most of them have sold out now most to, at most retailers. From Hattons, this this was an absolute bargain. Uh, Hattons of Witness, of course, formerly Liverpool, uh, an absolute bargain at only fifty nine pounds. I think you can still get some of the BR blue ones and maybe a BR green one as well uh, for that price. So if you haven't got one, I'd re certainly recommend popping down and getting one. Although they're still at such a bargain offer, or before they've all gone. Maureenly. The Royal Mail one was probably better in terms of livery in my opinion because it's quite colourful obviously with the red and the red and yellow stripes on the doors but I couldn't resist Scooby-Doo. I mean who can? It's a little wonder that this was one of the first ones to sell out. 
Um, you might be able to still be able to find it at cars at like Rails of Sheffield or smaller retailers here and there, but Hattons have sold out of this particular one. So, now that we've had a nice little look at the loco, um, we'll put her on the track and see if she runs as well as she looks. Well, I know, but you're about to find out. So, like I say, you've got the lights on the ends, but before I put them on, uh, I would just like to show you the end lights, the cab lights, sorry. See there? And they are individually controllable as well. So you can have that one on, that one on, or you can turn that one off and still have that one on, turn that one off, and then turn that one on. So, it's very good. Obviously, you can only do that with DCC. So I'd certainly recommend getting this loco chipped, otherwise you're missing out half the fun. Um, and then of course, you've also got the directional lights just there. And they turn red. Oh, I don't know if you saw that then, but it did turn red. Um, oh no, there we go. And then white, red, white, depending on which way you want it to go. So I always have the front cab on. And obviously I have the lights on in the right direction, because I don't think you can do it in any other direction. So, without further ado, let's watch her go. Right, so here she is, just coming round now. There we go. Um, and you can see straight away, she runs very smoothly. No stuttering whatsoever. Has the town there around the corner. You can also hear that motor, or I hope you can anyway. You can hear that that is really, really smooth. Fairly quiet as well, but you can still hear that she's moving. So she's um, she's friendly to those crossing the line who are listening out for the train coming. Let's see. See, I wouldn't usually show you the dark bits because obviously you can't see much, but because of these lights, I think it's a great way to demonstrate them to you. Um, I'm sorry if I keep going around the left struts as well. Yeah, you can hear that motor, it's a very regular pattern. It's very pleasing actually. Um, the beady eyed of you might have noticed that she has changed direction since I showed you her setting off. Um, that's just because of my OCD, basically. I realised she was going the wrong way for the outer loop. So, in between shots, I just quickly turned her around. Um, you know what I'm like, very OCD like that. See that light and the back lights as well. To get an overview of her going through the fiddle yard. around the corner at the end there. Um, so I'll get you some shots of her running through the scenic sections so you can really see what she looks like on a more scenic level because uh, that does her a bit more justice I think. She goes through the good yard there. Uh, you may also notice that there have been a few changes to the layout itself. Um, these will obviously feature in the next layout update. So uh, make sure you tune in for that, hopefully at the end of the month and at the end of the year as well. Um, I doubt I'll see you uh, any sooner beforehand, so do have a very Merry Christmas as well. That's what I remember to tell you. Um, and I look forward to another year of trains and railway expansion in 2019 so what i'll do is i'll just bring scooby-doo to a stop in platform three and then we'll do the classic look around on the pedestal
Okay, here we are with the pedestal, Scooby-Doo already set up on it. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear the rain, it's typical British weather, it's just suddenly started banging it down in the 10 seconds it's been since I filmed the last bit. Um, there you go, welcome to Britain, if you're not already used to it. Uh, so we'll just quickly go around the uh, class 128 now, uh, and you can have a good look around, um, see see what you, what you need to see. Um, you can see the grime behind the exhaust on the roof a bit better from here. Um, and yeah, I'll just be quiet for a bit, and you can have a look. So we'll start this end. There we go. Sorry if the rain's doing your head in, but I thought it's the last bit of the video. We'll battle on through, it's only a minute and a half. Um, so again, thank you very much for watching. Please reflect your opinion of the video with a like or a dislike, uh, just so I can take the feedback. Uh, and feel free to leave a comment or ask any question you need answering. Hope the video's helped you, and it's been informative, and at least given you something to do for 15 minutes of your life. Um, and I shall see you later. Again, have a very Merry Christmas as well. If I don't see you before, hopefully I will. But if I don't, have a good New Year. Uh, and best of luck in 2019. See ya. Thank you.